All right, today we're going to start chapter 28, but um, 28 and 29 are about magnetic fields. 29 uh, talks about where the magnetic field comes from and sources of magnetic field. And 28 talks about what the magnetic field does on a moving charge or a current. So, um, so I think it's better to first you to have an idea of where the magnetic field come from. Uh, so I'm going to uh, just cover a little bit of uh, chapter 29 to see where the magnetic field comes from, and then uh, go back to 28, and then we later on we go to 29 and uh, do more on the sources of magnetic field. All right. Um, but before we do that, I want you to answer this question. I want to get your feelings about uh, magnetic field. Have you heard of magnetic field before? Do you, how do you feel about it? So give me A, B, or C in this poll. I want to see whether you have heard about it a lot. Is it mysterious to you? Or is it simple to you? All right, so I see that some of you, most of you answer B, some of you answer A, so you and uh, fewer have heard about magnetic field and it is feels simple. All right, so most of you say um, you ha either haven't heard it or you don't know what it is exactly and where it comes from. This is the result of the poll. All right. So I want, I want to give you an idea, uh, of hopefully, so that it doesn't sound uh, mysterious to you. And I start with uh, uh, electric field, what we said about electric field. We said that if you have two charges, Q1 and Q2 at distance R from each other, the, uh, they apply a force on each other, which uh, can be written like this. It's called Coulomb's law. In, in fact, this is the force um, of, uh, on charge Q2 due to Q1, which is at the origin. Say Q2 is at some position vector R and Q1 is at the origin, and this is the force acting on two due to one, which is in the uh, R hat direction. And they are, um, if they are both positive, they repel each other. So the force will be in the direction of R hat. If they are, one is negative, one is positive, they attract each other. So means that this becomes uh, negative and force is in, in the negative direction of R hat means that toward the center, okay? So this doesn't need absolute value anymore with the magnitude has absolute value, but this shows the exact force um, with whole direction. So we talked about Coulomb's law and <coughs> then we divided the Coulomb's uh, law formula by uh, like say uh, charge of Q2. And we said that uh, Q1 creates an electric field everywhere in space and uh, the electric field is given by this. Um, one over four pi epsilon naught Q1 over R squared, and it is in the direction of R hat again if the charge is positive. And it is in the opposite direction, means toward the center if the uh, charge is negative. And then we said that the uh, charge Q2 in that electric field experiences an electric force and electric force can be calculated by Q2 times the electric field. Again, if the Q2 is positive, the electric force and field are in the same direction. If Q2 is negative, then means that the force applied on Q2 is in the opposite direction of electric field. Now in chapters 28 and 29, we have a similar picture, but for moving charges. So over there, we talked about the stationary charges. 
Here we talk about moving charges. A moving charge or a distribution of moving charges, which is a current, create a magnetic field. And another moving charge in that moving, in that magnetic field experiences a magnetic force. All right, so we're going to talk about that. It's very similar. We say that a electric, uh, electric charge, a stationary electric charge creates an electric field and an electric charge in that electric field, it experiences a force. Here we said a moving charge creates a magnetic field and a moving charge in a magnetic field created by that charge uh, experiences a magnetic force. So it's very similar. So what is the magnetic field of a moving charge? You see this, uh, uh, this is the electric field of a charge, whether it's moving or not, magnetic field is this. Magnetic field of a moving charge Q, but that is moving at the velocity V. Uh, and this charge that is moving, it's creating a magnetic field B at the position vector R in the direction of R hat and has a magnitude R, uh, this lowercase r, is given by this equation. This is mu naught over four pi. Mu naught is a uh, uh, constant physical constant, that's uh, the sister of like, epsilon naught, as the charge, the velocity, r hat divided by r squared. Unit of B is Tesla, denoted by capital T, that is the SI unit. And mu naught is four pi times 10 to negative seven uh, Tesla meter over amps. And you see this is for mu naught over four pi, then you cancel this, the, the whole factor here is 10 to negative seven Tesla meter over amp. So that it, it cancels, it's a meter over amp, cancels all these units and gives you Tesla. And then you compare that with electric field of that charge. You see Q charge Q creates an electric field that is kind of like this. Instead of mu naught here, we have one over epsilon naught, right? One over four pi is there. So one over, and four pi epsilon naught is instead of this one. And then we have Q over R squared. The only thing is that here is just R hat, here is B cross R hat. Means that it depends on the velocity, not only magnitude of the velocity, but also the direction of the velocity. We're going to talk about that. And that makes dealing with magnetic field a little bit uh, more, uh, harder or more complicated because of this cross product. But if you understand it, it's very simple. So in each case, R is the vector from the source point to the field point. What is the source point? Source point means that where the Q is that creates this, this uh, magnetic field. And field point is where you calculate the magnetic field, all right? Source point is the position of the charge that creates the field. Uh, field point is the position of the point charge, position of the point where the field is created. All right. Uh, these are expressions that are used sometimes source point and field point means that where the where is charge and uh, where is the point that you calculate electric field or magnetic field. That is uh, the R vector is from that point to that point, field uh, source point and um, field point. Usually for this, um, usually you put the uh, charge in the origin. Right now for these equations, the, the charge that creates the field is at the origin. And you're calculating the magnetic field or electric field at some point with the position vector r in space, all right? Any questions so far? All right, now uh, I want to illustrate using a figure from the book, from another book, uh, how the magnetic field works. This is the charge, capital Q here is denoted lowercase q, it's the same charge. And it is moving with this velocity vector in some direction. And we're calculating, for example, the B field at this point. And this is the vector R, which is uh, this vector 
uh, of course, this is the magnitude, this is the direction, our hat is in that direction and has a length of this lowercase r. And you see you are at this r makes an angle between uh, the cross product of two vector is a vector that's perpendicular to both of these vectors, v and r hat. You see, this is v, this is r hat. They make a plane, this which is this plane, right? And cross product is perpendicular to both of them. Means that this v is perpendicular to the to both of these, which is perpendicular, which means that perpendicular to the plane passing through those vectors. So it is in this direction or that direction. Now, perpendicular to a plane has twofold ambiguity. When you say the vector is perpendicular to a plane, can be this way perpendicular, can be the opposite perpendicular. So B can be this way or can be the other way. But remember that um, the cross product has a right hand rule that distinguishes between these two. So if you, if you put your four fingers in the direction of V and curl them, curl them in the direction of R hat, your thumb shows the direction of B. So it distinguishes between this and the opposite of that. Can you do that now? Put your four fingers in the direction of V and curl them in that direction, in this direction, and then it gives you this direction, all right? Your, your thumb will be in this direction, will, will not be in the other direction. All right? So this shows the, the magnetic field and the magnitude of it comes from uh, this equation that Q uh, V divided by R squared times mu naught over four pi. All right? And then if you, if you come to this point, you see that R hat then becomes upward R becomes from here to here, source point to the field point. And uh, then you can do the same thing. You see that B is this way. And B in this position is uh, bigger than the B this, in this position. Why? It's for, for two reasons. One is R, magnitude of R that is in the denominator becomes smaller. So it makes the whole fraction larger. Another thing is that the cross product here, V cross R, it becomes magnitude of V times magnitude of R hat, which is one times sine of the angle between them. So sine of this pi. So when you, when you uh, look at this point instead of this point, this R becomes 90 degrees, uh, this uh, phi becomes 90 degrees and sine of 90 degrees is bigger than sine of a smaller angle, right? So this, uh, mag magnitude of magnetic field at this point is bigger at uh, this point than this point for two reasons. One is it's closer to the charge. The other one is that uh, the angle is uh, 90 degrees, which is part of this cross product, okay? Um, and another way to look at this is that, uh, all right, and another, another thing is in, at this point, right in front of the charge means that in the direction of the velocity vector, the B field is zero. Why? Because this phi is zero. And right behind that, uh, means in opposite direction of the velocity vector, again, B is zero because if R is this way and V is that way, the angle between V and R uh, is 90 degrees, sorry, 180 degrees and uh, sine of 180 degrees is zero. So it get, you get zero B field right behind the charge and zero field right in front of the charge when it's moving at speed B, all right? And then at any other point, you get a, a magnetic field that is, it looks like a, um, rotating around this V axis. And it is rotating with like this if you, you, you can have a uh, right hand rule this way. If you put your thumb in the direction of the velocity vector, your four fingers uh, shows in which direction the magnetic field is uh, circulating around the axis of 
uh, the motion, right? So this is another right hand rule um, that simplifies the other right hand rule. You now you just see which direction the uh, velocity vector is, and you for the positive charge Q, the magnetic field circulates around the velocity vector in that direction of your four fingers, right? And uh, of course, right in front is zero, right behind is zero, and at any point, then it is given by this equation. Does it make sense? Any questions? Now, if you look at the um, charge going into the page, you're looking at it from behind, it's going away from you. Now, if you put your um, thumb in the direction of velocity, which is into the page, you see that your four fingers is circulating around that axis, which is perpendicular to the page, and it's going to the page uh, in clockwise direction. So it is, this shows the magnetic field lines. And of course, the further you go, uh, the weaker the magnetic field becomes, the closer you are, the stronger magnetic field. And it's circulating around the axis of motion of the uh, charge moving. All right, any questions so far? Of course, it depends on the direction as well. The, the more you go to the backward direction or forward direction, the, the magnetic field reduces. And now, um, instead of the charge moving, you can have a current. Uh, you can have a uh, current element. So if you consider a um, piece of wire here with length dl and has the current i in it. This works exactly like a moving charge. Remember the, um, the current definition is what? Can anybody remember what is the definition of current i? I is uh, Q over T, right? Or delta T or delta Q if you wish, delta Q over delta T. And if you uh, calculate I DL, then you can say it is delta Q over delta T or, or more precise, you can say DQ over DT times DL. You can look at it as dq times dl dt, right? And dl dt is v. So you can say this is the same as uh, having charge dq with moving at velocity v. So in the in the other. Uh, formula instead of Q times V, we can put I times DL, all right? So this is, <clears throat> this is the magnetic field of element of uh, current, DL, of a wire that carries a um, current I in that direction. So the magnetic field is exactly the same because this current is created by moving charges. Right? Any question? And then if you want to uh, find the magnetic field of a long wire, you have to calculate uh, for each small piece that what is the magnetic field at some point and then add all the magnetic fields together. All right? Any question? So it's, this uh, IDL, oh, sorry. I DL is the same as DQ times V. All right. Again, if you look at the current uh, from behind, it now the current is going into the page. You see the same uh, circulation of magnetic field around that current element. All right. So that uh, is the same as magnetic field of a charge. Now, 
Uh, this is called Biot-Savart's law, as opposed to Coulomb's law. Instead of uh, Coulomb's law, now we have this, which is the same as basically magnetic field of a moving charge. But in most of the books, it, instead of talking about a moving charge creating magnetic field, they like to talk about a current element creating magnetic field. And they are the same thing. All right, any questions? So we take this Biot-Savart's law as our principle here. And then what happens if you have a long straight wire? So if you have a long straight wire, see each piece of this wire creates a magnetic field. Like the, this, this piece of wire that has current I in it, it creates a magnetic field at this point that is, um, given by right hand rule, you can use uh, your right hand rule now, you put your thumb in the direction of the wire, in the direction of the current in the wire, and then your four fingers show that the current circulating perpendicular to this plane. So it's coming out in here, going in to the page in here, like, like in this scenario, right? Is that the perspective scenario, you see that the uh, magnetic field circulating. And for this element of current, this is what happens. And for the, another element, the same thing happens. It, the magnetic fields are in the exact same direction. So they all add up. And when you integrate over all these current elements, you get the total current like that, total uh, magnetic field like that. Okay. So this is the. Uh, is it, it is possible in next chapter, we're going to calculate that. So I don't know, want to go into details of that because it's the subject of the next chapter. So when you have a long straight wire, it creates a magnetic field like this, and then you can bend the wire to a loop and creates a magnetic field like that. So the current goes into the loop, uh, and like moves around the loop like this, and it creates a magnetic field like you see, uh, the magnetic field lines is like that. And then if you make the uh, loop of current multi turns, it becomes like this. You see now the uh, current goes around, 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 and all of these create a magnetic field in the same direction. So <clears throat> the magnetic field becomes stronger and stronger inside. And um, and in the outside, because there is some uh, current going this way, create a magnetic field in one direction, and then some current going the other day, direction, creating magnetic field in the other direction, the magnetic field outside weakens when you increase the number of loops and increase the, um, the length of this, which is called solenoid. We are going to talk about that again. So the magnetic field like this, and it looks like a, a magnetic field of a magnet that has north and south pole and this is exactly the same magnetic field why is that because this magnet is made of atoms um, if i magnify the atoms atoms are like this it has a nucleus the electrons are moving around it and uh, when you put the mag magnetic material uh, ferromagnetic material in a magnet in magnetic field they, they all have a, uh, these electrons that are rotating have a magnetic moment. We're going to talk about that too. They all align to each, align with each other like this. They, they, they all align um, um, and uh, therefore, uh, when you look at this, uh, uh, look at the magnet inside, you see you have all these electrons going around uh, in the same direction, let's say. And then you look at any point in here, there's some electrons going this way, some electrons going opposite direction. So there's, uh, they cancel each other's effect. But when you go to the border, you see that there's one electron going here, one electron going here, one electron going here, and going all in the same direction on the surface. It is like you have a surface, current density 
on the side of the magnet like this, which is exactly the same as this current density here. All right? So that's why they create exactly same magnetic field. And that's why, for example, if you break this magnet into half, it, you just have a smaller magnet. It's like the, breaking this into half, it still has uh, some magnetic field similar to that, but changes a little bit. So now you understand all of these magnetic fields that mag a magnet creates or a solenoid creates is due to moving charges, nothing more, all right? Of course, this is classical view at the end, you know, that changes. Uh, that's a different story, that's quantum mechanical effect. But this is, we are talking about classical uh, view of magnetic field, which is, the, which is uh, for our purposes, the correct picture, all right? So this is where the magnetic field comes from everywhere. Now we're going back and talk about um, what the magnetic field does to a moving charge. Right. Any questions so far? All right. Now, magnetic force on a moving charge. If you have a magnetic field present in space created by some moving charges, we don't care what created them. Now there is a magnetic field in, this, in space. And now we have a charge there. If the charge is standing still, there's no magnetic force acting on it. But if the charge moves, there is a force acting on it. And the force is given by this, F equals to Q V cross B. All right, now B is created somehow. Now we have the char this charge present in that position where the a magnetic field is created and it's moving at this velocity V. Uh, the rule is that it has magnetic force acting on it given by this formula, Q V cross B. Again, we have a cross product that makes things complicated. Over there, we had E equal to, um, we had E equal to, sorry, F for electric field was just Q times E. Now we have Q V cross B, F electric is Q times E, F magnetic uh, B is Q V cross B. It means that um, <clears throat> if the charge is not moving, there's no force acting on it. If it is moving in the direction of the magnetic field, there's no force acting on it. The force is appreciable only when V and B make an, make an angle close to 90 degrees becomes stronger. And the faster the charge is going, the bigger the magnetic field is, okay? So uh, this is another complication. There's a complication of what is the magnetic field, the formula that has cross product. Another complication is that now that we have the magnetic field, what is the effect of this magnetic field on a moving charge? Again, we have another cross product, okay? Any questions? <clears throat> All right. This is the, some picture that illustrates how the magnetic force works. This is a charge Q that is moving at this velocity vector V and it is in a magnetic field created by some other moving charges that is here. Now this Q is moving in this magnetic field. And you see that the angle between magnetic field and um, velocity vector is phi. And this equation says that the force is V cross B, is Q times V cross B, means that it is perpendicular to both V and B. Therefore, it is perpendicular to the plane passing through V and B, which is this plane here. So the force is perpendicular to that, which is this force that you see vertical, all right? And again, you can use right-hand rule for cross product to figure out the force is perpendicular to this plane. It has twofold ambiguity. Is it perpendicular this way or is it perpendicular this way? To remove that ambiguity, you have 
right hand rule. You can put your four fingers in the direction of V, which is the first vector, crossing the second vector. So you, you curl your fingers of your right hand from V to, toward B about the smaller angle between them, which is this phi. And you see that the, your thumb shows which direction of these two you should choose, which is up, not down. All right? If the velocity vector is perpendicular to, um, to the magnetic field, you get maximum force acting on the particle because you see the force is uh, Q magnitude of V magnitude of B times sine of phi. Uh, if you keep Q and V and B constant, if you increase phi, the force is increasing. Right? And therefore you get maximum value of the uh, force to be QVB. <clears throat> In general, it will be QV perpendicular B. V perpendicular means the perpendicular uh, component of the vector V, velocity vector, uh, to the direction of magnetic field. All right? So, so this uh, shows some of the features. And now if uh, this is all for positive charge Q, if the charge is negative, then uh, the direction of the force is in the opposite direction of V cross B because there's negative sign over there. So both of them, uh, the uh, direction of the force flips around. So you can use your right hand rule to find the a direction of V cross B, and then if the charge is negative, you flip it. All right, here's uh, showing right hand rule, how to use it. You see it says, uh, curl your fingers uh, in the direction of V to B this way. And then your thumb shows the direction of the force. If the, if the velocity vector is this way in the lower, figure. Now uh, V is here. You turn it, turn your four fingers into B in that direction. And your thumb again shows the direction of V cross B. And because the charge is positive, it, the force is in that direction. All right. And as you see, this is perpendicular to the plane of V and B, but downward. And the other one is upward. All right, any questions? Now, if, you, if the charge is negative, you see, first you calculate, you, you find the direction of V cross B, which in this case, if you do this four fingers in that direction will be upward, but then because the charge is negative, you flip it becomes downward. And in this direction, in this uh, lower case, if the velocity vectors vector is in that direction, you find V cross B is downward. And uh, because the charge is negative, you flip it becomes upward. So in, the, in each case, if the charge is positive, it's in one direction, the force is in one direction. If the charge is negative, the force is in the opposite direction. All right, any questions? Uh, if you if you understood that, now answer this uh, question. The figure shows a uniform magnetic field B directed into the plane, shown by blue crosses. So here we have this convention that um, if the magnetic field is perpendicular to the page and it's going into the page, we uh, denoted by crosses. It is like looking at an arrow, you know, uh, those uh, arrows like this, uh, lo looking at them from behind. All right, so it has, it has a um, tip and at the back, they have these uh, feathers that if you look at from behind, you see arrow, you see crosses. If you look from uh, front, you see them as dots. So, 
when the uh, magnetic field is coming out of the page, we denote them in the figures by dots. If they go into the plane, we denote them by crosses, right? So here uh, it says the uniform magnetic field B directed into the plane shown by the blue crosses, a particle with the negative charge moving moves in the plane, which of the three paths, one, two, or three, does the particle follow? So uh, think about it and give me the answer. Uh, one A, B, C. Uh, oh. A, B, C for one, two, three, please. So when the um, velocity, when the particle moves, there is force, magnetic force acts on it, and that changes the direction of velocity possibly. All right, we have about half of the, well, most of you answered A or B and four of you answered C. Does anybody want to explain their result or how they got that? Any takers? All right, so I'm going to explain myself. Uh, the velocity vector is into the plane uh, that you see and, uh, sorry, in the plane that you see to the right and the magnetic field is perpendicular to that, which is into the page. We said that if you want to find the force acting on it, F is Q V cross B. And in order to find V cross B, you need to put your four fingers in the, uh, in the direction of V and curl it toward B. So B is into the page. So you put your right hand uh, in the, uh, toward right and then turn it into the page. You, think, you see that the thumb shows the upward direction. So V cross B is up um, direction. But then Q is negative. So the force will be in the downward direction. So this is V cross B direction. This is force direction because Q is negative. So the force will be this way. And that makes, bends the path in the direction of the path three. Any questions? If you would like to, uh, if you would like to answer, uh, ask a question or something, I can explain more or. Um, can learn it better. So this is the main part of this chapter, figuring out where, which direction is the force on a moving charge, all right? You have to uh, look at the magnetic field, look at which direction the charge is moving and whether it is positive or negative and then figure out which direction the force should be. All right, any questions? All right. So the answer is C path three. All right, now we we'll want to study motion of a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field. Suppose there's a uniform magnetic field created somehow and a charged particle is in it and it's moving. And we want to see how this uh, magnetic field, a, a, um, uh, <laughs> magnetic field um, affects the motion of the charge, all right? 
So here is the uh, par positive particle is moving perpendicular to a magnetic field that is into the page. You see, again, it's denoted by crosses. It means that it's going into the page, perpendicular to the page. And this particle is moving in the plane of the page. So the mag magnetic field and velocity vector are perpendicular. And if you look at the cross product V cross B, you see that the field is uh, sideways and it is toward the left of the charge, in, right? And for example, the force is this way at the beginning, velocity is like that, and this force changes the direction of velocity. So velocity a uh, moment later becomes like this. And now the force is like this. And then, so it changes the direction of the velocity again. And when it comes here, the force is like that. So you see that this uh, creates a uh, force and ma makes the particle move around the circle. It's a centripetal force. And you can apply Newton's law to that. And uh, first of all, what is the magnitude of the force? Magnitude of the force, remember, was a, a Q, if the charge is Q, and V cross B, which is uh, magnitude of V cross B, which is Q, uh, V times B times sine of the angle between uh, V and B. But in, in this case, velocity vector is in the plane. The magnetic field is into the plane, into the plane perpendicular to that. So phi is 90 degrees, sine of phi is one. So the force F magnitude is Q V B. Uh, that of course was um, magnitude, all right? The force is QVB and it is toward the center. We can put it equal to MA. Remember when something's going around circle, what is the acceleration? If it's moving on a circle with velocity V or speed V, does anybody remember what the acceleration is? It's going at constant velocity v, and the velocity doesn't change. The, the speed doesn't change because the force is perpendicular to the velocity at all time. And it only changes the direction of velocity. It doesn't change the magnitude of velocity. So the speed remains the same, and the particle goes around the circle. What is the acceleration for something that's going around circle at the speed v? circle of radius r. Anybody? Over r yeah, v, v, v squared over r. Yeah. Yeah, v squared over r. OK, good. So we can, we can put this together. Force is uh, QVB, and it's equal to MA, and it's v, MV squared over r. And then. Uh, so we have QVB equal to MV squared over R. And then we can calculate R. One of the V's cancel. We get R equal to uh, MV divided by Q times B. So it goes around the circle given by this formula. So F equals to QVB. M and is equal to mv squared over r. Therefore, r is mv divided by qb. The reason you put the uh, absolute value of q here because q can be negative. So that ra radius cannot be negative. It, if, it, if the charge is negative, the force will be in the opposite direction. And then the, the particle goes in on the same, the similar circle but it goes, instead of going counterclockwise, it goes clockwise on the circle, all right? So the radius is given by this formula in any case. R is MV over QB. Any questions? All right. And you can write uh, V, uh, which is two pi R over T. T is the period of, uh, uniform circular motion and 
So because this is time, this is uh, circumference, time for one revolution and circumference. And you can write V as that. And then if you write R in terms of that, you get the T, you say this, uh, you put this V in here. So you get M over QB uh, times V, which is two pi R over T equal to R. R cancels out and this becomes one. So T becomes two pi M divided by Q times B, right? And this is the period of circular motion when a particle of charge Q is moving in a magnetic field B. And notice that V is not there. It means that it doesn't matter how fast it's going. It always goes at the same period. It takes, no matter how fast it goes, it takes this long to make it complete turn. Isn't, it that, isn't that interesting? It means that the faster it goes, the larger circle it goes around. Therefore, for one complete cycle, it takes the same time. All right? So this was for when velocity was perpendicular to the magnetic field. And what if the porosity is not perpendicular to magnetic field to begin with? If the velocity is not perpendicular to magnetic field, uh, it has two components, one uh, perpendicular to the magnetic, magnetic field and one component that is in parallel direction to the magnetic field like this. You see, this is <clears throat> now magnetic field is in, along the X direction. You see, this is magnetic field with the blue arrows. And uh, so the magnetic field are going to the right and this particle at this moment is going at this velocity vector V and has two components, the velocity vector, one parallel to B and one perpendicular to B. All right, and then um, the magnetic force is also, uh, will be toward the center here. Uh, it goes around the circle, but the circle moves so it goes around a helical path, as you, as you see here. And uh, R is given by the same formula, but instead of uh, MV over QB, we have MV perpendicular divided by QB. So the parallel component doesn't affect R. So it goes around the circle with, the, with this R. But then as it goes around the circle, it goes forward or backward, depending on which direction is the parallel component relative to B. So it goes on a helical path. It's like a spring shape thing. All right, so R is MB perpendicular divided by QB. All right, any questions? And you see that the larger the magnetic field is, the tighter this circle will be, right? And so one of the applications of this is magnetic bottle used in early tokamaks. Tok tokamak is a, um, is a device for harnessing the nuclear fission, a fusion. This is a tokamak that has two coils. I mean, the, the core of the tokamak has two coils, they have current in the coils. The current, uh, the current in the coils create magnetic field that looks like a bottle, as you see here. And the magnetic field is stronger when you get to the um, closer to these coils and gets weaker when they uh, get away from these. And as you see, if a magnetic field, if the charge is moving with velocity, the force is like that, the magnetic field is like this, and then it goes around like that. When it gets to, uh, closer to the, to the bottlenecks here, there is a force 
component that is um, backwards. So this comes here and then comes back and it goes to close to this one again. And therefore the component is backward. So it, the, char the particles get trapped in this magnetic field. That's, that's why it's called magnetic bottle. And this is for trapping the charged particles because in tokamaks, uh, they have to increase the temperature of the gas to a very, very high degree, and they cannot have any, um, any material that can hold such a hot gas. Everything melts down. So they create these uh, magnetic bottles to hold the gas in, uh, up in space, all right? So you see that the application of the magnetic field that we just learned about. Any questions? And then uh, they, they apply laser from all directions and gives these particle energies and the particles remain in that bottle because they cannot go uh, away. And uh, another application uh, or manifestation is Van, uh, Van Allen radiation belt uh, that creates uh, Aurora Borealis. Um, you see, this is the Earth, North Pole and South Pole. Uh, Earth has magnetic field. And these are magnetic field lines that you see here, a bit blue. And then these are uh, helical shaped thing that you see are the uh, path of the particles that are moving in the Earth's uh, magnetic field. The, the sun, uh, sends out particles and the particles get trapped in the uh, magnetic field of the earth and they go around. You, you see, this looks like a bottle again. And they go back and forth between North Pole and South Pole. And then when they come here and hit the atmosphere, they create these shapes that you see in, they call it Northern Lights, which is close to, when you go close to the North Pole, you see them, you can see them in Canada, you can see them in north of uh, uh, Russia and a lot of Northern Europe in general. So uh, this is, these lights are made of these particles hitting the atoms or molecules in the atmosphere and sending the electrons to a higher level. And then when they relax back to their same position, they, they give, photons, which you see as light. Of course, you can see the same thing in around the South Pole as well as the North Pole, all right? But, you know, in the close to South Pole, there's nothing, just uh, the Antarctica and there's no countries. Basically, nobody lives there. But if you go there, you see the same thing. Any questions? All right, so this is another uh, another application is the bubble cham chamber. Bubble chamber uh, is used to study elementary particles and their interactions. For example, a, a gamma ray comes here with this uh, momentum here. And then here it sees, shows that there is a pair of electron positrons are made. And the whole system is in the magnetic field that is perpendicular to the shape, to the page, and it is into the page. So uh, when a pair of electron positrons are created, one of them go in one direction, like uh, the positron goes in the upper part and the electron goes in, in this part because the electron has negative charge. And you can see that with this magnetic field, the electron uh, goes uh, the initial force on the electron is downward. Initial force on the positron is upward. And then uh, they go through that bubble chamber and create tracks. And you see the track of electron and positrons, okay? And now from the curvature of these, they understand how fast they're going and what charge they have. 
if something is going directly, uh, it it means that it doesn't it doesn't bend. It means that it doesn't have charge. Uh, but if something bends this way or that way, they know whether they have positive or negative charges. So this is uh, the device that they use in elementary particle uh, studies. Uh, this is um, an example. It says in the figure, the charged particle is a proton with the charge Q equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulomb mass of 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilogram. And the uniform half a Tesla magnetic field is directed along the x-axis, as you see. It's the same figure that I used over there. At t equal to zero, the proton has velocity components Vx and Vy given and Vz in meters per second. Only the magnetic force acts on the proton, means that um, there is no electric force. At t equal to zero, find the force vector acting on the proton and the acceleration vector. Find the radius of the resulting helical path, uh, the angular speed of the proton and the pitch of the helix. I mean, pitch means the distance traveled along the helix axis per revolution. It means that means basically this distance between these two. This is the pitch. Um, all right, so we want to find these uh, values. So let's start with A. At t equal to zero, find the vector force vector acting on the proton and the acceleration vector. So these are uh, the equations. F, remember, was QV cross B. R was MV perpendicular over QB. T is two pi M over QB. And these are the given values. B is half a Tesla and magnetic field has magnitude B, but it in the I direction, means half a Tesla in the I direction, I hat direction. And velocity vector has two components, X and Z. If we have Vx that's 1.5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second, and Vz that's negative four times 10 to the fifth meters per second. And we want to find the force at time equal to zero and acceleration at time equal to zero, all right? So this is part A. And then find the radius of the resulting. So what is the result, what is the radius, what is W and what is the pitch? All right, so we follow the uh, formula to find the force acting on this proton. It's Q V cross B. So you see, we have V and we have B, we can cross them up. It means that we can uh, cross multiply them to find uh, V cross B. So uh, V cross B is given by the determinant IJK. Uh, v is Vx. V zero Vz and B is B zero zero. The Y and Z component of B is zero. So if we find the X component, we get zero minus zero. So there's no X component. And then Y component is zero minus actually negative J hat times zero minus B vz and this uh, k component will be uh, this zero times minus zero so it has only one component that is um, b vz times j hat right so this is the cross product and then if you want the uh, force you have to multiply by q so f is QV cross B, these are vectors. QV cross B becomes Q B V Z J hat. All right, so you see that because the magnetic field has only X component, 
the x component of velocity is not there. It's only the perpendicular component of velocity that is there, okay? So this is the force vector. We know that it's in this y direction and it has a magnitude q v b z. So uh, becomes q v q b v z j hat. So you can put the numbers in. Uh, q was 1.6 times 10 to negative 19. And vz was negative four times 10 to the fifth. And b is 0.5 Tesla. And the whole thing is in the j direction. So f is, uh, we can calculate all these numbers become negative 3.2 times 10 to negative 14 Newton in the j hat direction. So it means in, the, in fact, in the negative j hat direction, negative y direction. All right, any questions so far? So this is F, you see, we have formula, we have uh, given values, we just plug in. Uh, acceleration is force divided by mass. And if you do uh, calculate this force divided by the mass, that is 1.6 times 10 to negative 27, you get 10 to the 13 meters per second squared. In fact, 1.92 times 10 to the 13. Uh, meters per second squared in the negative j hat because the proton, the charge is positive. So the force and acceleration, I'm oh, sorry, um, the force and velocity, uh, the V cross B was the same in the same direction. And it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative, the force and acceleration are always in the same direction because mass is always positive. All right. <clears throat> And R is MV perpendicular divided by QB. So we only put V perpendicular. You see, B is in the X direction. So this part, this VZ will be V perpendicular. This VX will be V parallel. So M is 1.67 times 10 to negative 27. Uh, v perpendicular is four times 10 to the fifth. And Q is 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 divided by, again, B is 0.5. And if you calculate that, you get 8.35 millimeters for the radius. So very small hel helix. And then what is the angular speed? And see, and this was resulting helical path, radius of resulting helical path, which was down, and angular speed, which is omega, and the pitch we want to find. So omega is two pi over t, or um, qb over m. See, uh, t was this, uh, two pi over t, one over t is uh, qb, over two pi m. And then if you do two pi over t becomes uh, becomes uh, just qb over m. All right, so qb divided by m gives you 4.79 times 10 to the seventh radians per second. So very, very fast going around. And the pitch, how do we find pitch, do you think? We, ha we don't have a straight formula for that. How far does it go forward here in each revolution? Because it's going at v, v parallel, which is Vx. And we want to see how far it goes in one period. It means that we need to find the period and then you multiply the period by velocity parallel is equal to, see, um, V parallel times the T gives you the pitch. So Vx times T. So Vx, T is again two pi over omega. So Vx is 1.5 times 10 to the fifth times two pi divided by 4.79 times 10 to the seventh, it becomes 1.96 centimeter. So it means that for each revolution it goes 1.96, about two centimeter goes forward. And the, 
radius of the page or diameter is about 1.6 centimeter, the diameter of the helical path, but it goes two centimeter forward in each period. All right. These are the answers. Any questions? So pretty straightforward, right? All right. Now, another application of the magnetic force <clears throat> is velocity selector. What is a velocity selector? It's a device that selects uh, certain particles with certain velocities passing through. Every other one gets deflected, so they, they stop it. So this, this is the structure of a velocity selector. It has a um, electric field and a magnetic field that are perpendicular to each other. So for example, there's a plate here, positive plate, right? And neg negative plate. And these create a magnetic uh, electric field from positive to negative to the left, right? As you see here. These red, red arrows are the electric field lines. And it is in the magnetic field that is perpendicular to the page going into the page. So magnetic field and electric field are perpendicular to each other. And the, the particles are sent in in perpendicular to both those, both electric field and magnetic field. And as a result, <clears throat> uh, each one of the electric field and magnetic field apply forces on the velocity vector. Uh, on the charge that goes at the velocity v. But uh, this is source of charge particles. And this is the velocity and the charge and its velocity going down. So what do you think is the um, direction of the magnetic field on this particle? We can say up, down, uh, into the page, out of the page, left, right. What do you think? Is anyone out there? So somebody says, yeah, right. Yes, that's correct. So if you put your four fingers of your right hand in the direction of velocity vector, which is downward, and then turn into the page, you see that your thumb shows right. So by right hand, the force of V field on the chart points to the right. So you can write this way, F B, which is force of the magnetic field is to the right and its magnitude is q v times b and be, because there's no sign of uh, phi here because what is the phi angle between velocity and b field is 90 degrees you see velocity vector is downward into the page in in the page magnetic field is into the page so they they make an angle of 90 degrees sine of 90 is one, so that's why we don't have that sign here. And what direction is the direction of electric field, electric force? The electric force doesn't depend on velocity, it's just Q times E, right? Q is positive, so it will be in the direction of the electric field. So it will be like that. Electric force will be <clears throat> equal to Q times E and in the opposite direction of magnetic field. And then now the net force will be Q F E minus F B, okay? For a neg negative charge, both of these flip around, right? And then the electric field will be this way electric force will be this way, like magnetic force will be the other way. So it, even if the particle has different uh, negative charge, it doesn't make a difference here. All right, so <clears throat> now what is the net force? Net force is uh, QVB to the right minus QE uh, should be equal to zero. So the 
uh, two forces. Now, I mean, if, if the particle has a net force zero, then uh, we see that QE should be equal to QVB and Q cancels, E should be equal to VB. So V should be equal to E over B. If velocity is E over V, then the net force on the charge is zero. If the velocity is bigger than E over B, if the velocity is bigger, then magnetic force is larger because it depends on the velocity, right? And then we get a net force this way. And therefore the particle goes that that. If the velocity is smaller, then the magnetic force is big, smaller and the net force is this way. And then the particle goes like that. So the particles that have this exact velocity go straight and all the other particles get deflected either this way or the other way. So only if a charged particle has a speed V, which is E over B, do the electric and magnetic field forces cancel. Other particles are deflected. And that's why <clears throat> this velocity selector only selects the particles that go with this velocity. And hence for the name velocity selector. Okay. Any question? All right. Um, I, I think it's a good point to stop here. Next time we're going to talk about more uh, phenomena related to magnetic force and uh, more devices and take it from there. Any questions?